Hi there, this is Heather, Shutterbug101. Today we'll be going over the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III and the kit lens 12 to 100 f4. Let's get started. The Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III is a 20 megapixel micro four thirds mirrorless camera with built-in stabilization that provides seven stops of stabilization and works together with the stabilization and Olympus lenses. This camera has 121 focus points, a fully articulating touch LCD screen, and has a continuous drive of 60 frames per second. The EM1 Mark III is built professionally, so it does not feature any automatic scene modes and does not feature a built-in flash. It does have 4K video up to 24 frames, two SD card slots, features USB charging when you're on the go, and is environmentally sealed. It also has a microphone port, headphone port, and built-in Wi-Fi to transfer your smart devices. Today, we will be going over the doors, buttons, and menus to help you navigate this camera easily. Going over the Olympus EM1 Mark III, I gotta tell you, this camera was one of those cameras that surprised me. You know, I knew that it was going to be a good camera, but I had more in store than I was expecting, and um, I'm really, uh, I'm really happy with how the pictures came out, personally. Um, you know, I just went to my local park to go for a walk, and found a lot of interesting things, so it goes to show that while, uh, while we're in this whole uh, quarantine thing, I know I haven't talked about it much on this channel, you can find ways to take pictures, um, whether it be your backyard, whether it be your local park, you go for a walk with your dog, um, whatever it may be, you can still find inspiration. You just have to kind of slow down and look for it. And uh, seeing as how we're kind of going through our different stages of opening things up, hopefully we'll have more opportunities to take um, more pictures and uh, you know, find our creativity that's kind of been blocked off to us for a while. So I just want to kind of spread some inspiration out there and I hope that everybody is doing well, everybody's staying well and being safe. Um, and if you guys have any questions about your cameras or projects that you can do at home, let me know, I'll be happy to help. We're gonna go ahead and get started on our walk through now. Uh, so starting with the lens, this kit lens is pretty fantastic. Uh, it is a 12 to 100 lens, which with a micro four thirds sensor, it's actually a 24 to 200. It has an amazing reach for a kit lens. And the fact that it's a solid F4 for the aperture is pretty darn fantastic. So if you're trying to debate on whether or not you should get this camera with this lens, absolutely get the kit. Um, because this lens is a pretty great all around lens. Like you couldn't ask for anything better than that. Um, with the size, you know, it's not too big. It's still fairly light. It's got a little bit of heft to it, but not too, too much. Um, we do have an image stabilization switch. That's what the IS stands for, is image stabilization. You can turn that on or off. Now, the reason you would ever turn that off, of course, because it's uh, compensating for your body shake, is if you have this set on a stabilizer or a tripod, uh, because at that point, the tripod is now doing the stabilizing. It, doesn't have to worry about any sort of body shake. Always recommend to turn off the stabilization when you do have it on something like that. Um, we do have a function switch here, which you can program in camera uh, to do whatever you would like that to. It could be for changing your aperture or, you know, it's just a shortcut button in general. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so this doesn't have a manual focus, autofocus switch. In order to switch the autofocus manual focus, this is going to be your manual focus ring here. If you see it slid up with no information beyond this silver ring, then you know it's going to be autofocus, which means if you tap your shutter button halfway down, it should be able to dial in focus for you. Now, if you kick it backward, now we're seeing uh, some numbers and some information here where it's telling you the distance of the focus, but it's also dialing your manual focus here. This is going to be your manual focus sliding it forward is going to be your autofocus. So I find that a lot of people find this little tool out on accident because it'll accidentally slip in their bag or their hands because it 
can be easy to do and people don't realize it's there and then all of a sudden they're like oh my gosh my camera's not auto focusing it's broken something went wrong so if something like that happens to you just make sure to check this switch um, on the front of the camera here we do have this button over here which is to change the lens so if you hold it down and turn there we go line up the red dot with the lens to the red dot on the camera slide and click then you are all set to go these two lenses up here on the front of the body are going to be uh, more function buttons essentially they're going to be for programming to do whatever you would like them to do um, you can do that in your menu which will go over last going over the side of the camera here in this door is going we are going to find our uh, SD card slots you have slot one and slot two slot one is supposed to be able to take the grade two cards which is the faster card um, which is pretty neat uh, for that 60 frames per second continuous drive it's definitely something that you want to have on hand as a faster card we do have one more door here which is going to be for our remote if you need a shutter release to do long exposures on the other side of the camera we do have a few more little doors here so in this door this is going to be our mic port and this door is going to be our headphone port and this door is going to have our uh, HDMI cable which has a HDMI mini I believe that is or maybe an HDMI uh, micro this port is going to be for HDMI cables so you can hook your camera up to your television or computer screen or whatever it may be and you can actually um, and you can show like a slideshow of your vacation or an event that you just did or whatever you want to do and then you have your USB-C cable uh, port here which is going to um, it's going to be for transferring images from the camera to your computer if you don't have a card reader but it's also going to be for charging the battery in camera if needed um, so if you're on the go and you don't have a place to plug your charger into the wall it's a great way to charge your battery on the bottom of the camera here you see that we have our universal screw mount for our uh, for our tripods and then this is going to be the door for our battery here as you can see this battery is uh, much larger than we're used to in the Olympus cameras much bigger um, so it's going to be able to naturally have uh, you're going to be able to shoot um, a bit longer when it comes to a longer battery life which is pretty fantastic going over the top of the camera here you can see that we have quite a few buttons and wheels and um, all of these things here let's go ahead and start with the power switch and actually just flip that on to the on part and it's gonna turn the camera right on um, here we have our drive mode so if we hit this button here it's gonna be our flash and our drive now this camera does not have a built-in flash so naturally all these flash settings are only going to be for when you have that external flash sold separately um, and you can attach it to the hot shoe down here is going to be your drive mode so the single square is going to be for a single shot so if you click and hold the shutter button down it takes one picture versus the uh, multiple squares with the H that's going to be your your high continuous shooting which is going to be 60 frames uh, the ones with the uh, heart by it I believe are going to be the silent modes um, you have pro capture you have um, low continuous you have your timers you have your shooting methods all of those at the bottom there now to change the bottom options you're going to use this wheel to change the top options you're going to use the front wheel here so top bottom uh, the button below it is going to be for let's see is going to be for our auto focusing so and our metering the metering is going to be on the top here so you have you have your evaluative metering which is going to consider the entire image and find a good balance for that you have center weighted which takes whatever's in the center and you have spot which allows you to take it from a specific area not necessarily in the center you also do uh, spot highlights spot shadow um, 
I like to have it on center weighted overall or spot. And then at the bottom here, you have uh, different focusing modes. So this is gonna be how your camera focuses. Um, so SAF is gonna be single autofocus. That's gonna be for focusing and locking on on a single subject. Uh, this subject is usually still. Um, so a still life, a landscape, someone posing. You have CAF, which is continuous autofocus, which allows the camera to continually focus as the subject moves. So like wildlife, sports, you have manual focus, which allows, of course, you to manually focus with the front ring on the lens. You have autofocus tracking, uh, preset manual focus, starry sky autofocus, which is pretty darn cool if you like to do a lot of starry sky stuff. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and move over to this side of the top of the camera. This is going to be our mode dial. So as you can see here, this camera does not have an automatic mode. Um, there is no auto mode. That's not what the A mode means, um, just so you guys know. So if you are just getting into photography, you know nothing about photography whatsoever, I don't know if I'm going to recommend this camera for you. Um, automatic mode can really help you get used to a camera just by uh, shooting on a mode where the camera is going to control everything, but you kind of get used to the feel and the buttons and the doors and all of those things. This sort of camera is for someone that knows what their shutter speed is, their aperture is, their ISO is, where you have an idea of what those are and maybe you wanna learn more about them. Um, so P mode is going to be your closest thing to auto mode. Uh, it's gonna be your program mode. It's essentially auto, but it gives you more control. So you can change either your shutter speed or aperture, you can change your ISO, your autofocus, all of those things under P mode, but the camera is going to help you out by working with the other options that you haven't changed uh, to make the picture come out. So that's always a really nice mode to be on. Uh, you also have a button here. So if you click down on this, it doesn't actually turn. So it's a nice little lock button so you don't accidentally uh, change modes here. The A mode, of course, is gonna be your aperture mode. Your aperture mode is gonna control the opening in the lens, how much light you let in, but it also controls that bokeh effect, that nice blurred background, sharp foreground. The shutter speed mode is going to be for naturally capturing speed. Um, you can either capture a uh, still motion or show motion, like uh, the water over a waterfall, if you want that a nice blurred uh, effect versus a bird flying midair. You have your M mode, which is gonna be manual mode. Your manual mode is, of course, giving you full control over everything. Um, the camera's only doing what you tell it to, so keep that in mind. B mode is gonna be for bulb, um, so you're able to do long exposures for as long as you'd like. Your C1, C2, C3, and C4 mode are all custom modes. These modes, you can, uh, if you shoot in a studio setting, if you have very specific video settings that you like to use, you can uh, choose those settings and save them to C1, C2, C3, C4. So if you go to a different situation and you want to dial into one of these modes or play around or whatever you want to do, and then you go back to your studio situation later, you just have to dial into the mode that you saved it to. And the way that you save it to a custom mode is actually in the menu itself, which again, we'll go over last. Um, the last option here is going to be your little video camera. That's of course going to be your video mode. Um, now keep in mind if you're on your P mode or A mode or your S mode or whatever, you can also record video. All you have to do is hit this red button here once to start recording, again to stop recording. Uh, it's pretty simple, but in video mode, it gives you more options uh, to like view your mic levels, that sort of thing um, in video mode. Um, up here, of course, we've already gone over our adjustment dial here, our adjustment dial here for depending on what's on the screen. You have your exposure compensation, so you can make your scene brighter or darker um, without changing any major settings. So if we hit that button and then we adjust with this back button here, minus numbers, as you can see is changing right down here. It's gonna make it darker. Plus numbers are gonna make it brighter. Okay, so, and then zero, of course, is just what it sees, what it recommends. Uh, we've gone over our video button, and then we have our ISO button right here. 
uh, which allows us to change our ISO. So if we hit that button here, we can go ahead and use this back wheel to adjust it. Um, if you're still kind of wanting to learn more about your shutter speeds and apertures, I recommend setting your ISO to auto and then setting a limit in the camera itself, which we'll go over. It's going to be our menu button here, uh, which of course going over last. So if you hit this button here, it's going to give you this quick menu here, um, and then you can change them accordingly. So ISO, you have your white balance here that you can change, which is just temperature control. Uh, you can change uh, kind of how it intakes the color, whether you want natural, vivid, black and white. You can do shadows and highlights, uh, smile detection, um, where the camera's auto-focusing. Um, it's going to tell you what your uh, auto-focusing mode is at, very similar to the top here. Um, it'll tell you, you can change your quality when there's a card in it, uh, whether you want to shoot in RAW, JPEG, or both, or what you want to go to which card. Uh, your drive mode, your metering mode, um, your ratio size, so 4 by 3 is, or 3 to 2 is going to be more common. Um, you have your video mode and what, uh, what quality of video you want to be shooting in. Always have this set to sRGB, it's going to be the color code uh, that's adjusted to your pictures when it comes to editing. And then you have like your settings button and whatnot. Uh, this is also going to tell you down here how much time you have left for video. Um, it's just going to tell you your exposure, your f-stop, your shutter speed, what mode you're in, and your battery level here. Otherwise, it's going to tell you those same things here as well, uh, just in a more limited setting. You can use your screen to uh, take pictures versus just focusing through the viewfinder, which of course has a sensor in it to turn itself on or off. Uh, you do have mode one and two here, which currently it looks like mode two is manual focus and uh, one is auto focus. And this is your auto exposure, auto focus lock, which you just kind of click and hold as needed. You have your little joystick here, which is going to move around your focus area. Okay. Uh, you have your OK button, which also brings up your quick menu as well and allows you to use your directional pad instead of touching it if you would like to do it that way. Also, your universal escape button, if you're ever stuck in something like that, is just push your shutter button halfway down to get you right back into shooting mode. Your info um, button is going to change the look of the back of the uh, the look of the back of the screen here. So naturally, this has no information. Uh, this has some information here. Uh, this has even more information regarding um, like zoom and that sort of thing, focusing. Um, but personally, I like this one uh, because it gives you the information that you need, like how many pictures or video you have left, um, your battery level, that sort of thing. You have your playback button, which will allow you to look at pictures when there's a card in it, you've taken pictures with it. And the trash can button, which will allow you to delete pictures um, that didn't come out or that were blurry or anything like that. And now we're going to go ahead and get into the menu. So the menu is going to have all of these tabs here, um, which are going to separate uh, different shooting menus, your video menu, your playback menu, and your settings. Um, so we'll just go ahead and start scrolling through here. Now, some of these are already laid out on the outside of the camera, which we've kind of gone through already. Um, so you may find that I might just skip over them, or I might just skip over some that you may never change. Um, but if you do have a specific question about uh, something that I might skip over, or maybe I don't go over in enough detail for you in the menu itself, give me a comment below. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, so up at the top, you have reset your custom modes. Um, you can reset your camera, you can reassign your custom modes up at the top here. So if you're playing with this camera and you're doing something and all of a sudden the camera is doing something funny and you have no idea what you did, you can always go ahead and reset it to factory settings. Your picture mode, that's how it uh, takes in color again, like the vivid, the black and white, which you can also change on your quick menu. Your image quality, the raw, JPEG, uh, the image aspect ratio, Again, you know, the 4x3 is going to be one of the more popular ones. Uh, keep the digital teleconverter off. You have your drive mode and your um, 
timer, which again is the button up at the top here. Then we have our shooting menu too, which will allow you to turn on bracketing, your HDR, which is going to be, um, is going to be your high dynamic range, which will allow you to, which will allow the camera to automatically kind of find a balance between shadows and highlights for you. Now this can make or break your image. If you edit your shots and you're shooting in raw, I would just keep this off. Um, you have your keystone compensation, your anti-shock silent mode, uh, high res shots. Now that's going to be mainly for things that aren't moving, you know, landscapes. Uh, we have your video mode, which is very similar to the shooting mode. It's just all built for video. So you have your mode settings, uh, specification settings for video quality, your image stabilization, uh, your button dials and levers if you want to program those for video uh, for that video mode up here on the dial. Um, different display settings, um, your HDMI output if you wanted to change that to kind of play back videos on a television from the camera itself, which is neat. Um, the playback menu is for pictures that, of course, you've already taken. So if you want it to have an automatic rotation that's on, you can edit, you can um, re reset the number to where um, it resets the number every time you put a new card in. I don't really recommend that if you know you organize your stuff. right? And then you have a Wi-Fi connect in this tab here. So if you want to connect to the Olympus app, to um, download your pictures from the camera itself to your smart device, you can go ahead and do that. We have your custom menu here, which is the little gear. Now this, you can see, has a whole different row tab. So this one's gonna be the most laid out. So you have your autofocus mode, which again, is controlled by the top here. Um, your autofocus auto exposure button, um, your autofocus scanner. I mean, all of these, you're really not going to change. You know, autofocus illuminator. This has a little LED here up at the front, um, which will shine a light out if it's having a difficult time focusing, whether it be due to lack of light or lack of detail. Um, that kind of helps it. You can do face priority if you're taking pictures of people. Um, you have starry sky autofocus setting, manual focus assist. I mean, resetting the lens if it has like that uh, function button on it. This is so you. So this will allow you to change uh, different button functions, the center button, directional key, dial direction, if you want to change, you know, which way you want to adjust it, the function lever function. I mean, there's, this camera can be so customizable. You just really have to play with these, kind of find what you're going to change. Um, you have like your release priority, uh, your your burst settings, flicker reduction for fluorescent lights, the image stabilizer. So you can you can turn off the in-body stabilizer if you're on a tripod as well. That's going to be in the uh, gear menu here. You have your control settings, picture mode settings. I mean, you're just you're not going to change a lot of these. Your frame rate uh, for viewfinder or screen settings for your preview, grid settings if you would like to set up a grid to help you with that. Um, rule of thirds, uh, histogram settings, your selfie assist, because naturally this screen flips out. You can turn off the beep sound. That's what that little sit symbol means. It means the sound beep, uh, your HDMI, your USB mode, um, you know, your different steps for ISO and your, um, exposure value, um, your ISO auto set, um, which on here, I would definitely set it to, I would definitely set it to like a high of 6400. Uh, 6, I think that's a really good uh, mode to set it in if you're going to have your ISO on auto. Uh, you have your noise filter, which I would just keep on standard overall. Uh, noise reduction, bulb time, the bulb uh, like timer, if you want to set that for eight minutes or longer or shorter or whatever you want to do. And this is all going to be like live bulb. So if you, the Olympus camera has this really cool mode where on the live bulb mode, um, it'll actually show you the image being burned into the sensor, which is really neat. So you'll know when to stop or, you know, because with other cameras on bulb mode, you're just kind of guessing it's a lot of trial and error. So that's what's so cool about the Olympus cameras, especially the newer ones. Uh, you have composite settings, your metering, 
Uh, so these are all going to be your custom flash settings here when you do have an external flash, which really you'll control that from the flash itself. Um, you know, this is all going to be white balance and color intake. White balance overall, I would just leave it on auto. The camera's pretty good at determining what the white balance should be, um, generally just shooting around. You're welcome to play with that in like studio or, you know, in a setting where you may want to add more warmth or coolness to your photo. But if you change your situation, you always want to change that back to auto. That way you're not dealing with blue or orange people in your pictures. Um, you have your color space, which you'll keep at sRGB, your card slot settings, file name if you like to reset that. A lot of these are just, I don't, I'm not sure why they include so much in the menu. Uh, you have your touch screen settings if you'd like to turn that on or off. I mean, a lot of this is just nonsense. I'm not sure why they include so much of it. Uh, your battery settings, your backlit LCD, if you want it to go into a sleep mode after a certain amount of time to save battery, or even an auto power off completely. A uh, quick sleep mode, um, that, that's everything in your custom menu. So when I was talking about how there's a lot that you can customize on this camera, there you go. Your custom menu really allows you to make this camera your own by customizing everything from certain button pushes to how your camera autofocuses, your color intake, whatever you want. Uh, the next tab here is gonna be your setup menu. Um, so you do card setup. This allows you to format your card. Now, if you've never heard the term format before, it's actually really important to know. Um, the reason that you would format your card is what formatting does is it permanently erases every picture and all the data off of the card and makes it brand new. Now, the difference between that and the trash can is what the trash can does is it deletes the visible file, but it keeps the data and allows it to be overwritten. Now that over time of just using the trash can over and over and over again can actually cause problems, can cause corruption, it can cause you to lose your images, it can lock up your card so you can't use it or access it. Um, so I always recommend that if you go on vacation or you do a job and you make sure that your pictures are backed up to an external source, make sure it's backed up to an external hard drive, an online source, whatever it may be, um, but you make sure that they're safe off of the card. You wanna go into your menu and you'll want to uh, go into your wrench here, go to card setup and go to format to permanently erase it so you can go on to your next job or your next trip. Um, now, if you're the type of person that buys a new SD card for every situation and you like to keep the pictures on those cards, be my guest. You're fine. You're good to go. But if you reuse your cards, formatting your card is really important to do every now and then. Uh, you have your settings like your date and time, your language, adjusting the brightness, uh, the record view, your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings, your firmware, if you wanted to check that and make sure it's up to date. And then the last one here is a My Menu tab. So you saw me kind of go through the gear, your custom menu, and kind of breeze through a lot of the things that it's like, why do they have it on there? Why do I need to know that? Um, why take the time to learn it, you know? Um, but there are things in that menu that you could use. So if there's anything in these tabs that you're like, gosh, I wish there was an easier way to find that instead of scrolling through everything, you can go ahead and add certain things that you know you're gonna have to access to the My Menu tab. So you know that every time that you need to access it, you can just go to the My Menu tab, the little star, and it's gonna be sitting there, right there for you. So another way to customize your camera to your needs, which is really, really neat. Other than that, I mean, that pretty much sums up this camera. It's impressive. For me, I think that um, the menus are a little bit out of control, but that is probably the only complaint I have about this camera. Some people do not have any issues with that. Um, it really just is preference. Just because I have a hard time with the menus on the Olympus does not mean that you will have a hard time. Um, you know, that's why it's so important to do your research, go in, hold onto the camera, shoot with it, 
uh, see how it's laid out because if it makes sense to you, even though it doesn't make sense to your friend who goes, oh, that's an awful camera because I don't like this about it, you know, it might fit you really well and you can make it work for you. It's all about your personal comfort. It's all about personal preference. So whether you're a Canon shooter, a Nikon shooter, a Sony shooter, a Fuji shooter, a Panasonic shooter, or an Olympus shooter, all of them take great pictures. It's a matter of what's comfortable for you and what you enjoy and what makes sense to you. Because if you can make sense of the layout of a camera, then you can take great pictures. You know, I mean, depending on what you're using it for, of course. You you do want to find a camera that fits what you're doing, whether it be landscapes, animals, kids, um, you know, playing sports, whatever it may be. You just want to make sure you find a camera that works for you, that has a good layout, that's comfortable in your hands, and then you found a winner. Uh, if this camera works for you, I'm glad. I, I can personally tell you that the pictures are incredible and I'd be happy to use this camera again. If you guys have any questions that maybe I didn't go over, if I didn't go over something enough in detail, please let me know in the comments below. I will definitely help answer any questions you have. Um, I do cover all of the manual modes. The, I do cover metering. I cover uh, focusing in my basics videos and my tips and tricks videos. So if you have any questions about hearing about those in more detail, please go and take a look at that playlist, which I'll attach at the end of this video. And keep your eye out for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.